the math section is 60 questions in 60 minutes. So you have a minute per question. But like I said, um, the math section increases in difficulty. So questions one through 10 should take you maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds. They won't take you a whole minute. And so that adds up so that at the end, you can have maybe three or five minutes to work on the harder problems. And we'll take a look at what the harder problems look like. OK, so the topics are um, in order of most weighted and most heavily seen on the exam. The first one is going to be pre-algebra and plain geometry. So those are about 20 to 25 percent of the exam. And then 15 to 20 percent of the exam is going to be elementary algebra or intermediate algebra or co coordinate geometry. And only 5 to 10 percent is trigonometry. So based on this, you want to strategize by focusing on the most weighted. If you are not proficient in plane geometry, because it's so prevalent on the exam, you want to focus on plane geometry over going back and learning trigonometry, which is only 5 to 10 percent. But that being said, you also want to have seen every topic. Before the actual exam date, that doesn't mean you have to be um, proficient in it or excelling in it but at least knowing what trigonometry problems look like before the day of the test, that will help you to know if I can't do this and it looks like a trigonometry problem and I haven't worked on trigonometry yet, I can skip it and come back to it later. So um, to get a good score though, to get maybe a 30 plus, you need to have practiced all of the material thoroughly and be comfortable answering all the different types of problems, which we're gonna cover. So before we get into the actual topics, let's talk about the process that you should use. So the first thing to do is um, figure out what the question is asking you. Is it asking you for X or 3X? Is it asking you for profit or is it asking you for revenue? Things like that um, will really change how you work the problem. Because um, what I recommend doing is underlining or circling the actual question that they're asking you. Because um, that's going to help you later on. So then the next step is to figure out what information is available to you. Sometimes I like to make a table with um, the different values for each variable that they've given me, and that helps you when you choose a strategy, which is the next step. So you can choose a strategy which can either be working backwards from the answer choices, using an algebraic equation, graphing or sketching, using inequalities, or plugging in answer choices. So based on the information that's available to you, you might find it that you might find it beneficial to work backwards from the answer choices. Um, and that means going using answer A and trying to solve backwards and get the values that are in the question. Or you can use algebraic equations, which will kind of lend themselves. It's very obvious what when you should use that, because if the question is asking you um, what is 3x plus 1? there's not going to be much back solving. You're going to want to just plug in numbers. And then graphing and sketching are good for problems where they say, where they give you a line equation and they say which one looks most similar. So graphing one yourself will help you eliminate incorrect answer choices. Inequalities should be used for inequality um, problems. And then plugging in answer choices is good when they give you, um, Let's go back to that 3x plus 1 example. If they say 3x plus 1 is 10 and they're asking you what x is, you can either solve for x or you can go and plug in option A, option B, and option B, C, and option D into the equation and see which one gives you the correct answer. And then your last step should always be to go back and double check if you really answered the question that they wanted you to. Did you solve for x or did you solve for 3x? And so some other general tips are to utilize the answer choices for understanding what your answer should look like. So, for example, if all of your answer choices have units in it, you should know what um, variable you're solving for, because if it's in volume, your units would be in um, cubic. So they would either be like meters cubed or liters, something like that. So that's going to tell you that you're not solving for area, but for volume. And then also another general tip is don't stress too, too much about the last few problems because questions 55 through 60 are very difficult and like very high level high school math. So you just want to work towards getting as many right as you can as a whole on the test. 
because question number one is worth the same amount as question number 60. So you don't want to rush through the first, like the first half of the test because you want to work on the harder ones and then get them wrong because they're worth the same amount and you could get them right quite more easily than the like question number 60. Um, and then another tip is because the questions are arranged in ascending difficulty, you want to work first from last. So the easier questions are at the beginning and with practice, these can be done in 30 to 60 seconds, which adds up later to give you more time on the harder questions. And if you can't figure out an answer quickly, meaning if you can't figure out an answer within um, a minute and a half and you're still stuck, skip it and come back to it. But if you do know what you're doing and the process is taking longer than a minute, that's OK. But if you're stuck, you should skip it and come back later. And then again, always understand exactly what the question is asking for, because you don't want to get to the end of the problem and um, bubble is something that's different than what the question actually wants you to solve for. OK, so pre-algebra. So this is, again, 20 to 25 percent of the test. And this is includes knowing the difference between whole numbers, counting numbers, integers, rational numbers and irrational numbers. So obviously rational numbers are numbers that can be written as fractions. And then irrational numbers are numbers like pi, so numbers that can't be written as fractions. And then going further down into integers and counting numbers and whole numbers, you should know which one of these includes negative numbers, which one includes um, decimals, which one includes zero. So things like that um, are important for this topic. It also really helps to know your basic perfect squares. I would recommend knowing them up till 10. So knowing what two squared is, three squared is, four squared is until 10 squared. Or actually, I think even knowing um, 12 squared and 13 squared are helpful as well. And then it's also good to know when and how to use the least common multiple and the greatest common factor when adding um, fractions or dividing fractions or multiplying them. And then another thing that's good to know is how to convert fractions to percentages and percentages to decimals or any of those different conversions like decimals to fractions, because that will come up a lot. And then another thing that's good to know is basic probability. And the best way to do this is, in my experience, to look at competition math videos. So like any um, tips and tricks that people coming from math counts or like math leads will tell you, those will actually really help you with basic probability. And then for these problems, you can use your calculator. So that's something to remember. You can use your calculator on all 60 questions in the math section. This is obviously very different from the SAT, which has a no calculator section and a calculator section. So with the ACT, you can use your calculator the entire time. And especially for those first 20 questions, if your mental math skills um, tend to lead you down the wrong path sometimes, if you tend to accidentally say 9 minus 1 is 7 instead of 8, I would recommend using your calculator for these problems. Okay. So elementary algebra, so this is 15 to 20 percent. Again, it's good to know your square roots, which are just the opposite of the perfect squares that we talked about on the previous slide. It's also good to know how to convert um, between even and odd decimals, I mean, sorry, exponents and decimal and fractional exponents. So knowing that um, 10 to the power of negative three, which is an odd number, is, sorry, negative 10 to the power of three which is an odd number, is going to give you a negative number versus having a negative number to the power of an even number giving you a positive number. So that's one thing to know. And the other thing is that fractional exponents are going to turn into square roots. Um, so a number to the power of one half is going to be the square root of that number. Um, and a number to one third is going to be um, the cube root of that number. And another thing that's important is to be able to understand and practice word problems. So knowing kind of what the basic um, tricks and how they format word problems is a good way to start. So knowing that all problems that have an initial value and that initial value is going to be your y-intercept. So basically practicing word problems so you get comfortable is very important for this section. And then another thing that's important is knowing how to factor. So there's different ways that people factor um, you can use a crisscross method, or um, I know a lot of people use trial and error, but either way, knowing how to factor is very important. 
And you can factor in your calculator on the TI-84. And if we have time today, um, I'm going to pull up the um, online version of the calculator and we can go over some of the common things that you can easily do on your calculator versus writing them out. So intermediate algebra is, again, 15 to 20%. Things that are tested in this section include absolute value properties. So knowing that any negative number inside of an absolute value is going to become positive. And if you have a negative outside the absolute value, it's going to become negative are important things to know. Um, inequalities, knowing how to solve inequalities is very important. And then also it really helps to be able to visualize them. So I've kind of given you an, a visual of what I mean by this. So if they give you X is greater than four, knowing that that's going to have a um, open circle, not solidly filled in, and it's going to be to the right of the four is very important because it's going to help you like if they're asking you for which of these numbers satisfies inequality being able to see it in your head and saying okay any number to the right of four is going to help um and then we have algebraic properties of inequalities so there's um different rules that are involved when solving inequalities one of the common ones that people tend to miss is that when you're dividing by a negative number you have to switch the sign of the inequality so for the example that we have here, the negative 2x is greater than or equal to 6. When we divide by that negative 2 to isolate the x, we must switch the sign. Um, and then we also have matrices. So ACT has matrices under intermediate algebra, but you don't tend to learn this until pre-calculus. But um, with matrices, it's difficult to learn. I think that's definitely something that people tend to struggle with. But there you can put them in your calculator and get an answer very easily. And that's not to say you shouldn't learn these at some point, but for the purposes of the ACT, there's typically only one question per test. So I would recommend learning how to just put it in the calculator versus learning the actual math behind it until you get to pre-calculus. So, and then also memorizing the arithmetic and geometric formulas. So this includes um, the formulas that are for the sum of the geometric and arithmetic sequences, and then also for the um, like the next value in the sequence. Finally, there's the complex number, which is i, and i is equal to the square root of negative one, which is imaginary, because you can't take a square root of a negative number. That's why it's i for imaginary. Um, and then knowing how to multiply binomials that contain i is very important. And again, you can do this on paper, but you can also do it in your calculator by switching to complex mode. And the I on the TI-84 plus CE is right above the period, I believe. So clicking second and then clicking the period will give you an I. And the calculator can do that if you put it in complex mode. And another tip with complex numbers is don't change your I squareds to negative one until the very end, because that will keep you from getting confused if um, with the I's. OK, coordinate geometry. This is an example of how coordinate ge geometry graphs might look on the exam. So coordinate geometry includes knowing that parallel lines have the same slope and that perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals of one, 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 of one another. Sorry. So if the parallel lines have a slope of negative three, the perpendicular lines to the, these are going to be um, one third. So it's the negative of it and the reciprocal. And then graphing skills are very important for answering these, these questions, because if you're stuck, you can sketch out a graph. And what that means is like sketching out the relative steepness. Is it going to be very steep as if the slope is like 10 or is it going to be less steep like the slope is one? And then also kind of understanding which quadrant it's going to be in and knowing how the quadrants are numbered is very important. So knowing that they go um, one, two, three and four. So basically the one where X and Y are positive, both of them. That's quadrant one. The one where y is positive and x is negative is quadrant two. The one where both of them are negative is quadrant three. The one where y is negative and x is positive is quadrant four. And then knowing properties of para parabola functions is very important. So knowing how you can solve for the vertex, axis of symmetry, knowing the properties of these and how you can get them is something that's tested on this exam. The plane geometry, this one is one of the more heavily prevalent topics on the exam. So knowing the properties and relations 
of plane figures, which includes angles and relationships among these. So knowing what complementary angles are and that they add up to uh, 90 degrees and then supplementary angles adding up to 180 and then vertical angles and um, knowing how they look in parallel lines. So if you have a parallel line that's being cut by a transversal, it's important to know which ones of these are going to be equal to each other and the other ones that are going to be supplementary to each other. And for all of these, we, um, with Nicole and I, we really recommend Khan Academy as the best shopping. place to practice. And then, so we also have the properties of circles, triangles, rectangles, parallelograms, and trapezoids being tested in this section. So properties of circles, these include knowing the formula for area, um, knowing the formula for circumference, which is basically the perimeter of a circle, um, knowing what the origin is of it, and um, also the angles. So knowing what a central angle is and the different types of angles that are prevalent within a circle. With triangles, it's important to know that there's, there's equilateral triangles, um, isosceles triangles, and those, um, the three different types of triangles. And so also knowing the rectangles have four sides and not all four sides have to be equal, but if they are equal, it's going to be a square. And that um, basically a square is a type of rectangle where all four sides are equal, but rectangles just have to have four sides with um, opposite sides being parallel and equal in length and having four 90 degree angles. Parallelograms, knowing that um, the top um, two sides are going to be parallel to each other, but the other two sides do not have to be parallel to each other. Or sorry, parallelograms, both sides, both pairs have to be uh, parallel to each other. They don't have to be 90 degrees. And then trapezoids, it's one pair that's parallel and the other pair is not parallel. And then another thing that's important is transformations and dilations. So knowing how to do these is important. Geometric proofs and proof techniques. So these are tested differently than how we're tested on these in school. Um, in school, we're expected to be able to write proofs and geometric proofs. But for the ACT's purposes, you need to understand how um, we come to the conclusions that we come to at the proofs. You won't be expected to write them or um, fill in the blanks or anything, but it's, it's good content to know because it will help you when they ask you other questions. Um, also knowing volume and area formulas for all shapes um, is important. And by all shapes, I mean the um, all of the shapes listed in the second bullet point and their 3D counterparts. So the SAT does give you a formula sheet. The ACT does not give you a formula sheet. So you have to memorize these. And again, applications of geometry to 3D shapes is important. And then this should actually say um, trigonometry, which is five to 10%. So trigonometry relations within right angles is important. And everything that you need to know is in this picture right here. So knowing that sine is the ratio of the two sides that are opposite to it and the hypotenuse and then cosine and then tangent and then their inverses, which are cosecant, secant and cotangent. And then um, knowing that sine squared and cosine squared add up to one is important. And knowing the law of sines is important. And then being able to convert between degrees and radians as well. So everything that you need in terms of trig is on this picture right here. Um, so like I said, trigonometric, trigonometric relations in right triangles, values and properties of trigonometric functions, which means when you graph the graph of sine um, on a coordinate plane, how does it look? And then knowing the different properties of it, so the amplitude, uh, the period, things like that are also tested. And being able to graph them, which you can just put them into your calculator if you have a graphing calculator, and that will solve the issue for you. Um, modeling using these functions is pretty rare, but it's also good to just kind of glance at. So knowing what word problems with trigonometry look like is important. It's not too heavily tested, so it's not, uh, it doesn't need to be at the highest priority of yours, but it's good to know. And then being able to solve um, trig equations, being able to use identities as well.